Should the Utah Jazz trade Rudy Gobert? You know he is a defensive genius. He is arguably the best defensive player of his generation. He is arguably the most impactful defensive player of his generation. But man, is he a liability on offense and in the pick and roll defensively. If the LA Clippers series taught us one thing, it's that Rudy Gobert can not guard wings and the Jazz had no depth to answer that. So is Rudy that much of a liability that the Utah Jazz should trade him? I would tell you he is not. And I would remind you of a couple of other things that go along with this conversation. The Utah Jazz are coming off of one of their best seasons in certainly the modern era, but arguably the best season in the history of the Utah Jazz regular season. Best record in the NBA. Nearly led wire to wire. The Suns gave him a run at the end, but the Jazz hung on, even without Donovan Mitchell. They went from fifth last year to the number one record in the NBA this year. That's a tremendous jump. They won a playoff series, which they hadn't done in the last couple of years. That's a nice move forward. But you can't help but be left with a bad taste in your mouth. And you want to find somebody to blame. Rudy Gobert is not your Huckleberry. Does he need to get better? Yes, he does. But here's one thing you should also remember. While you're talking about trading Rudy Gobert to Uzbekistan <laughs> for a bag of, you know, like tea, I would remind you that Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell form one of the best tandems in the NBA. They're absolutely something you have to scheme for and something you have to deal with. Now, does Rudy hurt you? Yes. Offensively, Rudy Gobert is a liability. There's no doubt about that. And in the pick and roll. These are things, though, that he can work on. If Rudy Gobert dedicates himself this offseason to adding some post moves so that you can throw him the ball in the post, that's the very baseline that you need from Rudy next season. Give us the ability to throw you the ball in the post. Show us that you can finish. Show us that you can put the ball down and still shoot 50%. If Rudy Gobert does that, all of this talk is going to look foolish. And my guess is, as a proud Frenchman, he will do that, Jake. I am not at all in favor of trading Rudy Gobert. Yeah, I just don't think you, you, you're in a position to do it, and I don't think you should do it. You know, I, I, I think, you know, from, from the contract side, from the, from the money side, yeah, you can't trade him until October. But I, I think from a you know, team perspective and what you have going for you, no, I, I don't think you should be looking to trade him. I, I think the problem is, is that you know, the way that they lost to the Clippers really made him look worse than he was. You know, I mean, you're 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 asking a big. And again, I want people to stop thinking of, of Rudy Gobert as like, you know, some, you know, just some otherworldly defender. He's a great defender in the paint. That's what he does. That's what every big does. He's not going to be a good defender against a wing player in the corner who's half his size and twice as athletic as him. So it's an unfair thing to say, hey, Rudy got exposed, and he's why they lost, and he should be the scapegoat. No, why they lost was is they weren't able to absorb the injuries, and they weren't able to 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 compete at the highest level against a legit you know title contender once you had the injuries. That's why you lost. But if you want to put somebody's head on a stake, that would be president of basketball operations, Dennis Lindsay. Yeah, exactly. It is not Rudy's fault that he's on the floor in mismatches. He plays when he's told to play. He sits when he's told to sit. They did not have a backstop because Dennis Lindsay got emotional over Derek Favors wanting to come back to Salt Lake City. That's where you lost the Clippers series. Mike Conley, investing in a guy like Mike Conley, who you know has been hurt throughout his entire career, believing he would be healthy when he's never displayed that ability, that's where you lost to the Clippers. Because, again, I'll say, if Mike Conley was healthy, you're not losing four straight games to the L.A. Clippers. You're not. And it's shocking even to sit here and say the Utah Jazz lost four straight games to anybody. But they did. And they did because the, the Clippers found this current incarnation of the Jazz is kryptonite. And that is Rudy Gobert in isolation in the corner against guards. And in this particular situation against an athletic wing that A, dunked on him, and B, shot threes repeatedly because Rudy didn't even pop out to the corner. Yeah, and, and I think, too, Rudy talked about after the game and in his immediate availability that the Jazz had schemed defensively to leave Terrence Mann open, that they had specifically told Rudy to rim protect instead of going out there to contest those shots. So that's why I say it isn't really a, hey, Rudy sucks problem, because he doesn't suck, but he does have 
a, a, a specific use. And that's the thing. And we, and, and we talked about this yesterday. And I think a lot of people in the media have talked about the fact that, that the jazz have a lot of guys who have one skill set. They do one thing really, really good for you, as opposed to a lot of things really, you know, average or really good for you, you know? And so I look at Don. He's somebody who can do a lot for you. But then you look around the rest of the roster, and you're like, okay, Bogey's primarily a shooter, can give you some some paint scoring here and there, depending on the matchup. Jingles is primarily a shooter. You asked him to try to play point. That didn't really work out too great for you. You know, he can do it, but it's not really the best, you know, that you would, that you would, you, the best way that you would use him. So I just think that the roster has to get the word I'm using and the word I'm going with is more dynamic. You need to get rid of these guys that are one skill set players. You need to bring in some guys, even if they're younger guys that aren't as experienced, who can do more for you. Because again, I still believe in Quinn Snyder's ability to develop some of these guys. That's why you saw Bogey's, you know, paint game come back. That's why you saw some of these adjustments made. So I think you have a guy who's capable in Quinn Snyder. You just got to get players who are more pliable and can do more things. Yeah, and I think one of the things that you have to realize is Rudy Gobert is pretty much untradeable right now. One, you couldn't even by rule trade him until October. So all of this idea that, oh man, we're going to trade him for Ben Simmons and be better off, and we're going to talk about your stupid tweet yesterday in a minute. But anyway, no, the, point is, the point is, the point is, Everybody's like, oh, Ben Simmons, he's a facilitator. You're not trading Rudy Gobert to the Sixers, who already have Joel Embiid. You're not trading Rudy Gobert to the Sixers. Uh, you can't trade him till October. Um, you're not going to be able to just snap your fingers, pick up the phone, and be like, all right, we're trading you Rudy Gobert. Give us everything you got. <laughs> like, nobody's making that deal. If you called somebody October 1st and said, we want to, we'd like to explore a Rudy Gobert deal, you, they're going to leverage you. You're going to lose that trade no matter how you you slice it. He is just now starting that $205 million deal, by the way. Remember that. This is the year that that deal kicks in. 40 mil a year. You are leveraged on, on that contract. Nobody is going to, quote, unquote, help you um, unload that contract to make you a better team when you already were the best team in the NBA in the regular season. Nobody's willing to help you get better. And so I think what the, the smart thing to do here is, is you have got to backstop Rudy Gobert's weaknesses. And how you do that is you've got to add a legitimate number two scorer that you can count on. And that's not named Boyan Bogdanovich. And you need, in my opinion, that's the guy that that you need to that you need to move. Boyan Bogdanovich is the guy that I think brings you the most back in a trade. His contract is manageable and he's eligible for an extension in October. So I think you can't hang on to him. You need somebody that's better than him. You need two point guards on this team. One that starts, one that comes off the bench. That is not, you know, his name's not Oni. His last name's not you know, like, you, you can't have Joe Ingles as your point guard you off the Austin bench. Austin Rivers, man. You know, like, you need somebody of that caliber. Yeah. And those guys are going to be in the free agent market. And the problem is you're going to wind up splitting your mid-level exception, I would guess, and you're going to have to get creative in trades. You're going to need to make a three-way trade. Yeah. All of this to say, I would fire Dennis Lindsay. I would, I would completely sweep the front office and rebuild from there because this is still a very good basketball team. And I want you to hear me say that, Jazz fans. I think you need to embrace that idea. While you're talking about cutting and trading and firing everybody, remember that you had the best record in the NBA. You had home court advantage. And ultimately, the things that came down on top of you this year was, you know, in my opinion, just the, the, the culmination of really awful drafting and really poor salary cap management, bad contract decisions. That's what came down on top of you um, in game three of the Clippers series because Donovan was hurt and you had nobody who could score the ball. Oh, but we're going to shoot the lights out. And then what happens when you don't? I mean, I, I just, I think this is pretty simple. Rudy Gobert is not your biggest problem. Yeah. So I would yeah. not trade him. All right, go ahead and talk about your dumb Ben Simmons tweet yesterday. All I said was, is that at least Ben Simmons plays. At least Ben Simmons plays, right? Like, Ben Simmons is 6'10", 240. He's 24 years old. He's nine years younger than Mike Conley. 
The problem is, is it's fantasy land to talk about the Jazz going and getting Ben Simmons because he's he's on a hundred and forty million dollar contract. So yeah. they're never going to go and get Ben Simmons. By the way, Mike Conley is not a Utah Jazz man anymore. He's a free agent. So you're not you're not going to do a sign and trade for Ben Simmons. But the point I'm getting at is that. Either way, you need to replace Mike Conley. You're not going to do that with Ben Simmons, but my point is is you need to do it with somebody who's going to play most of the season and is going to be there when it matters most because I'm tired of talking about and hearing about how Mike Conley is hurt and Mike Conley's hamstring and he's he's questionable and it's a mild hamstring strain that we can't play him for six weeks at a time. Yeah, I mean, we're tired of that. You know, the, the Jazz fan base deserves better. You know, frankly, Donovan Mitchell deserves better. And and I, I I think, you know, in these next like three to four seasons with Donovan Mitchell, you gotta make some serious headway. Like you gotta make a finals appearance. You gotta like you gotta do some things. You know, I feel like yeah, I agree with you that they, they took a nice step forward if you wanna say that, but the expectations were so much greater this year than than the semis. Like that's just not But what... but wait, 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 wait. For who? For the organization, for the fans, like I think based on what you did in the regular season. Like you, the expectation yeah. was is that you were going to go much further. Further, I mean, again, we've talked at length on this show about how you can't rely so heavily on three point shot. That that can't happen. You know, you're 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 not. It's not sustainable. But you can't argue with the fact that you know. Again, you were just saying it. You know, one seed, dominant regular season team. Like you know, you had what you felt like was a great mix, and then Conley gets hurt, and Don's got to play on one leg, and you've got all these issues. So. Again, it's not on Rudy. It's not on Conley per se. It's on Dennis Lindsay to build a better roster that can handle injuries. Notice the Clippers didn't miss a beat without Kawhi Leonard. Anybody notice that? Well, because you have a guy in in Paul George who, yeah. and I know Jazz fans hate Paul George, but he's having the one of the best postseason runs in recent memory. I mean, he is a dominant force right now, but you're also getting contributions from young guys in the depth that you brought in. I mean, Reggie Jackson for a million dollars a year was a phenomenal signing. And, you know, if, if you look at the, the way the Clippers are built, hell, if you look at the way the Phoenix Suns are built, they drafted really well, they developed really well, and they added some key free agents. That's the, the formula. You don't trade, you know, I, I no, I, like the, we could go over the Mike Conley deal over and over and over again. I'm just telling you, you don't you don't trade young talent to get an aging veteran who's always hurt. You know, like yeah. this is why I exclude Will Barton as a possibility for the Jazz. I don't want another point guard that's always hurt. Yeah, Will Barton never plays a full season. Never. He, he rarely even plays 70 games in a season. I'm not trading for that guy. I'm not signing. He's a free agent. I'm not signing that guy. If you haven't learned your lesson on injury injury prone point guards, I don't know when you will. Um, and frankly, you know, a lot of people in the comments right now are asking, like, you know, what free agents you're going to sign. I don't even know that you could pick one out. Like, I have a list of every free agent that's available this year. You don't have the money to go and sign a free agent. Yeah, I mean, I think your 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 process, you know, really doesn't start with free agency. The process starts with. You know, firstly, obviously, with Ryan Smith deciding whether he's going to fire Dennis Lindsay in that front office or not, and if he decides to keep Dennis Lindsay, which I do think would be a mistake, but let's say he does decide to keep him, what does Dennis Lindsay decide to do with this roster? Because my feeling is, is if it continues to be his roster, there's not much change that's going to happen. I mean, obviously, you know, you're not going to re-sign Mike Conley with with what he wants to be paid, but I would guess that you would add like a point guard and you would just do some small little things this off season and you try to run it back. I mean that's what all the players said in the in the in the you know the exit media availability if that's what you want to call it, but I just think I just think you can't expect to make a finals run with the same roster you had because again the other thing that we're not talking about here is this season it and everyone deals with injuries but the fact is is the Lakers were not the Lakers right like they they were injured all year long. So what you did this season to get to the one seed and get home court advantage and all that great stuff is not going to be good enough next season. That's the real truth of it. So I don't want to see the same roster from this season come through next season and have finals expectations. And frankly, even if Kawhi Leonard doesn't go back to the Clippers, they've got the money to spend to replace him. Yeah. Um, the Clippers are going to be better. I think the Denver Nuggets are going to be better. I think the Phoenix Suns aren't going anywhere anytime soon because now Phoenix is going to be a destination for free agents. Um, because they're in the Western Conference Finals, whether they win or lose, um, you're going to argue that they were a player away. 
I mean, there's just all of this momentum, if you will, in the Western Conference that's working against the Jazz. The Jazz are in a very important moment in time. And that's why I say, Ryan Smith knows if he's going to keep his front office or not. And I think it will be tragic, frankly, if Ryan Smith keeps his front office and the status quo, if they just leave everybody in place, Quinn Snyder, Dennis Lindsay, you know, like everybody is in place. That's a huge mistake. And it tells you that you're happy being who you've always been. And when, when you do something because that's what we've always done, you're always making a mistake. It's always the wrong thing to do. Yeah. And to me, if you don't fire Dennis Lindsay um, and clean house in that front office, you're doing the same thing you've always done, and you're going to get the same result you've always gotten. And Dennis Lindsay has not shown you. And, and, and really look at this with an objective viewpoint. What has Dennis Lindsay done? that makes you think he can build a a championship contender. Because this Jazz team, and and I tell you this all the time, we really try not to say I told you so. Yeah. But we've been talking about this Jazz team in this light for two years. This is not a championship contending team. They were not a championship contending team this year. I, I had an argument with a guy on YouTube yesterday, and I told him, hey, go back and listen to any of our shows that we did the very one of the very first shows I think we ever did on YouTube about this was about the Jazz not being good enough. Mm-hmm. You know it when you see it. The Jazz lack athleticism. They lack their own talent. They lack quality free agents. They lack uh, the ability to close the paint. Like they just defensively, they're just not good enough. And there, that's why this stigma about how the Jazz were oh this great defensive team. They were not a great defensive team. <laughs> The regular season is almost meaningless other than playoff seeding. It's almost meaningless because look how much the game changed. They they struggled athletically with the Memphis Grizzlies. They struggled athletically with the Memphis Grizzlies. It took superhero performances from Donovan Mitchell early in the game and late in the game. It took a vendetta-filled Mike Conley to just go off against his former team to put that team away. That was not an easy series. And it may look 4-1, and I totally get that. That was not a gimme series for the Jazz. So when you got to the Clippers series and and they had come out of a long series with Dallas, I told you this was going to be a long series because athletically the Clippers were going to rest and they were going to feel better. You just know the, 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 the championship medal of a team when you see it. And, and right now, I think that's the Phoenix Suns. I don't think it's Milwaukee. I, don't, I, I certainly don't believe that it's Atlanta. I, I look at the Phoenix Suns. They have a guy in Chris Paul who's been there, who's done this before. You can't say that about Milwaukee. You can't say that about Atlanta. You can't say that certainly about anybody but the Clippers and the Suns. And I think this Suns team is so much more ready to compete, Jake, than than the the Jazz were and certainly more ready to compete than the Mavericks were. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be much more difficult for PG and the Clippers to come back and and, and overcome this this, this what's going to be a 2-0 deficit tonight. Yeah, well, and I think that, you know, it's funny. People are kind of talking about with Chris Paul being out that the Suns haven't really missed a beat. And I think that's because Chris Paul has led them uh, really well this season, and he's instilled a certain style of basketball. So you combine Chris Paul with um, the coaching style of Monty Williams, which I really like, um, and and then you add a guy uh, in Devin Booker who's absolutely blossoming uh, into uh, an absolute superstar, killer, you know, that kind of a guy stature-wise in the league, and all of a sudden you've got this team that that seemingly is is really – Frankly, tough to beat. I mean, again, I know that the Nuggets didn't have Jamal Murray, but they they dispatched the Nuggets in four games, dude. Like it wasn't <laughs> Pretty close, easily. dude. Like it was like they went on the road, and the biggest fight in the series was Game Four when Jokic decided to swing on campaign, a bench player. They dude. were so frustrated. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Anyways, let's get into the comment section. 
because there's some hilarity that's ensuing. Also, can you turn the drop machine back up? It is. It's it's it's, it's up. Yes. Oh, okay, I thought it was still off. My no, bad. my bad. Shut up. My I bad. never make mistakes. I'm perfect yeah, and sorry. I'm good looking. Mm-hmm. Uh, Driftwood first in says good morning. No, Ben Simmons sucks. I don't know why you ever thought that'd be a good idea. Gabe Ledley says congrats to you and my apologies to Mrs. Monty, um, who happens to be standing right here. She just got off the Peloton. Wait, um, what is that? In re- what is that? Our official wedding anniversary is tomorrow. Oh, oh, okay. Mrs. Monty tries to forget that day. Um, you know, it's a day in her life that lives in infamy, so she often tries to avoid it. Um, you know. Tanner Plummer says, morning, guys. Random thought. The people who are calling for Quinn's job are obviously too young to remember Ty Corbin's years. Why would you even bring that up first thing in the morning? I mean, we're all just trying to get loose. We're, we're and, just trying to get through this time in, in the sporting year. Yeah. you got to bring up Ty Corbin. Why would you do that? Uh, James Knight said, good day, lads. Rudy is not at fault. That's on Quinn to have a tactical plan to combat teams going small. See, but even a lot of people have said this, and I just say, what's the answer? Where is he going to go? Yeah, what, what's what, the adjustment? What, what, I mean, you're not going to bring in, you know, I heard so many people on Twitter talk about this. Oh, well, bring in favors. He's more mobile, and he can close out well, No, what people No, like, what people wanted him to do was to play Joe Ingles, was to play Boyan Bogdanovich, was to play Donovan Mitchell, um, you know, and, and, and re- essentially replace Rudy Gobert with Jordan Clarkson. Yeah, and and have your fifth guy be Royce O'Neal. Well, how, who's going to rim protect? Because the 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 issue with that theory and with that plan is, Boyan Bogdanovich can't keep your mom in front of him. Yeah, like I mean, he, he lateral defense on this team is a huge problem. It went left to right defense is a huge problem. Yeah, and athleticism. Athleticism is a huge problem. Donovan yeah. Mitchell could not move in the in the Clipper series. Like that ankle was bad, but his le- when he's healthy, his level of athleticism is what you're looking for. You're trying to in replicate these, in that. these new guys. Yes, you're you know? trying to replicate that with four or five other guys. And that's why I say, as much as like a guy like, um, you know, let's take Dylan Brooks from the Grizzlies as an example, who pissed off Jazz fans and who Jazz fans love to hate on, and for good reason, right? I mean, the guy is kind of a asshole on the floor. The guy can play incredibly good defense on many different levels of the defense. He can play at the top. He can play on the block. He can even, you know, if he's guarding someone his same size, he can play paint defense too, you know? And so that that's what I think you have to prioritize that moving forward. And it would be nice, again, it's not a must, but it would be nice if the guys that you either trade for or the low-end free agents that you're going to have to sign, it'd be nice if they could shoot it a little bit too. That that would that would be nice. Well, and that's the, the argument for having kept Jay Crowder that everybody brings up. Jay Crowder didn't shoot the three this well when he was a jazz man. Well, I can tell you that. I don't ever remember him shooting at this level. But um, I, I just think that you, you, all of the people who are screaming for Quinn Snyder's head, you tell me what you would have done differently. How would you have handicapped Mike Conley being out? It's not, it's not Quinn's fault that Mike Conley's his point guard. He has no say in that. I mean, in all seriousness, Mike Conley is a really good point guard when he's healthy. But Mia Oni, is that who you want to replace Mike Conley with? I mean, But like, at least, like, see, but Oni's, Oni's a good example, though, right? Like, I'm not saying I want Oni to start on my team, but what I am saying is that I love the fact that I can bring him in to get some stops. He can play defense. Like, I'm not saying that he's the best defender in the league, but I can definitely throw him on Terrence Mann and make Terrence Mann's life difficult, right? Like, he guarded... Some of the best players on the other team for the Jazz. The problem is, is he's really, really young and he needs development. Yes. So this season, he wasn't going to be able, you weren't going to bring him into what was your game seven, what was your season ending game, and hope for the best. You can't play rookies in huge roles with some exceptions. You can't play rookies and young guys in huge roles and expect to win a championship. Unless you're Terrence Mann. You just can't. But he's not the reason they'll win a championship. Yeah. Like, he drops 150 on the Jazz in that game and then disappears in game one. And then, oh, by the way, comes off the bench and hits a big three for them. Yeah. You cannot. I'm just not a guy. Look at the Clippers. How are the? Why are the Clippers able to come back on Dallas and, and Utah? Because they're led by guys like Kawhi Leonard and Paul George and Nick Batum well, and Reggie theory. Jackson. It, it's a veteran-laden team. Yeah. 
And those are the ones that win championships. Look at who's won recently. Golden State was a, a, a battle-tested team. The Lakers last year were led by LeBron and AD, and Cantavius Caldwell Pope's not a rookie. And did, did, Morris was on that team? Yeah, I, I just, well, they have the wrong Morris because yeah. Marcus Morris is shooting the lights out for the Clippers. But yeah. anyway, here, no, there. My point is you can't have expectations of a guy like Trent Forrest, which is why you never saw him in the postseason. And, and I just, I want people to understand this is why when we talk about the draft, this is why the draft matters. This is why blowing pick after pick after pick after pick, Dante Exum missing on Devin Booker for Trey Lyles. I, you can't make those mistakes and live to see another draft. Yet Dennis Lindsay has for a decade. Yeah. And, and it, it, he's the guy that's at fault here. That's your problem. So everybody's screaming for Quinn Snyder to get whacked. I, I, find me a coach who would have made better decisions. And, right? and would would them whacking Quinn Snyder make you feel better? Like, because I feel like I feel like some of the Quinn Snyder talk is just Jazz fans wanting wanting someone's head on a stake for for getting eliminated in the postseason. Like, I legitimately think that that's part of of why the Quinn narrative is is you know so rampant. And also, yeah. by the way, you know you've got guys like Stephen A. Smith and Max Kellerman on ESPN, Stop. you know, rolling out that that Quinn should be fired, which is just a it, it, I just. Those guys are always going to give you like the headline shock jock line. Their job is hot take guy. Yeah. So like, you know, when you, but like when you really get into this team, it's so obvious that Quinn had nothing to do with it, that it is, it is all about the fact that he was so limited with the roster. Yeah. I, it, yeah. Anyway, um, Tanner Plummer says if the jazz move on from Lindsay, who should they get Danny Ainge? I mean, it's a high. It would be a coveted job. I mean, there's not an executive in the NBA who wouldn't want, wouldn't want to run the Jazz. And by the way, are you are you going to criticize Ryan Smith for signing Danny Ainge? Is someone, probably not. Is someone going to say, "Hey, that was a dumb signing." Probably not. Probably Local not. guy? No, probably not. Yeah. Uh, Eric and Raleigh says trade Mitchell and get a package of players back. I, I, See, I just can't do that, dude. I'm not. What are you talking I, about? I, I, and and this is kind of. I was tweeting with Eric yesterday, and this is kind of what I'm getting at, man. Like, you, you're you're not trading the foundation of your organization. If you're trading Donovan Mitchell, now you're talking about just burning the whole thing down. You might as well why fire everybody, that? dude. Like, no, I, why would you trade Donovan Like, it doesn't Donovan make Mitchell. any sense, man. Donovan, do you understand that Donovan Mitchell is arguably a top 10 player in the NBA right now? Donovan Mitchell I mean, is your you, Michael Jordan. Yeah, what like, are you Donovan talking about? Donovan Mitchell is your guy. He also says that Jazz can't sign anyone. They're $21 million over the cap. Well, actually, they can sign people. Yeah. Um, they have a 5.9 mid-level exception. They have $5.9 million that they can send and trade, um, and they can make trades. They're not going to be able to go and sign a mega free agent, but when has this team ever signed a mega free agent? That's not that's not who they that's not how they operate. And with that in mind, that's why it's so important to me to move on from Dennis Lindsay. You got to get a new era of guy in that office. Uh, eBay the Sofa Surfer signed Dinwiddie or trade for Terry Rozier, Jared Allen if they could work a deal for him. Yeah, see, like if you had Jared Allen, I feel like you know, and I'm not sitting here certainly saying that Jared Allen is a better defender than Rudy Gobert, but Jared Allen certainly gives you more options offensively than Rudy Gobert does. Yeah, my guess is Dinwiddie would cost you 15 to $18 million. Now, he's coming off of a significant knee injury, but he's he's about 100%. He really wanted to play uh, in the second round for Brooklyn, but, um, I mean, he's he's going to get 15 to 18 million bucks. Um, and I don't I don't know how you fit that money, but I would love to have Dinwiddie on the team. Um, I think Spencer Dinwiddie's a hell of a player. Yeah. Uh, Mitchell Eric and Raleigh says Mitchell is the only piece that has any trade value. No, I see, I would that's just, just not true. See, with all due respect, and Eric Eric and I have a have go back a long way. I just think you don't know this roster well enough. If you're saying that that you should trade Donovan Mitchell, no. If you're saying he's the only one with trade value, no. Um, I, I think we've talked a lot about, I mean, Boyan Bogdanovich for everything he does not do, um, is an elite three point shooter and has shown now gritty and uh, grit and toughness. Um, and he only makes $18 million. And if you really want to get aggressive about guys who have trade value, um, not that I'm advocating for this, but if you really wanted to make a deal happen, Jordan Clarkson could get brought up. He's got a ton of values. A sixth man of the year. You know, you don't want to lose him off the team. Manageable deal. But yeah, he's a deal that you could move if you if you needed something extra to get a big deal done. Again, I'm not advocating for it, but I'm just saying he's a piece that you could look at. What you cannot do 
is extend Joe Ingles and Boyan Bogdanovich. Yeah. You, you just, you cannot but do that. But see, if Dennis stays, like, I have no doubt that they will get extended. I, like, seriously, can we sit here and say that if Dennis Lindsay stays, that, that those guys won't get extended? I think that's a huge mistake. I just, I don't have, I, I don't hate Dennis Lindsay, but I don't have faith in his in his strategy and in his decision making. And and really, I guess the best way to say it, uh, when you take the draft into account, is I don't have faith in his in his talent evaluation, whether it's him, whether it's the scouts that he hires, whatever yeah. it looks like, I don't have faith in his ability to say, okay, this is the guy that we need to go and trade for because he's got a lot of athleticism, he can play good defense, and we don't have to pay him $20 million a year. We can pay him eight or nine million a year, and he can go ahead and earn a bigger contract for the one year that he's with us. You know. Well, and I think when you look at where the Jazz are in two seasons after next year, they have a lot more flexibility. The problem is obviously you're paying Donovan thirty, and Rudy is thirty-eight million or whatever it'll be, um, and Boyan's still going to be on your cap at that point for like thirty million. So that's why I say Boyan Bogdanovich is the guy you're looking to move. I think. We have to ask the question to, you know, and, and I would throw this out to Jazz fans as well for your thoughts. Like, like, don't we have to ask how how much of a setback are you willing to take to get your money right? Like, how, like, you were one seed this year. Next year, this coming season, are you willing to go back to being a five or six seed in an effort to get your money right and to get into a much more flexible position with all of that? You know, are you, so my point is, is like, in reality, are you willing to trade Boyan, are you willing to to you know get out from under Jingles? Are you willing to move these guys to correct your cap situation with the trade off and and accepting the fact that you're gonna be a lesser team? Like, is that a reality? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I the hard decision is Joe Ingles because he's after. I think this coming season, next year will be his last season with the Jazz, uh, cap wise. But looking at some of the other numbers, I mean. Jordan Clarkson's only owed $28 million. Yeah. Um, he's very tradable. I, I, like Royce O'Neal's a guy to me that you you also look at moving and upgrading because Royce, I mean, other than being a three-point shooter, and he does good things. He's a good defender. He gets after it. He is a high-motor player. Um, he got you some critical second-chance opportunities in the Clippers series. But on the whole, Royce O'Neal's just a guy. Mm -hmm. He's not somebody that's irreplaceable. He's not an elite player. He doesn't do anything exceptionally well. Yep. I would tell you that, you know, he, he, to me, um, Royce O'Neal and Boyan Bogdanovich are your two most tradable players. Both have value around the league. Both would be, you know, players that, <clears throat> players that you would, you would welcome onto your roster. So I, I think they absolutely have tradable pieces. Jackson says uh, drafting is like 80% luck. It's okay, not. when you select Trey Lyles instead of Devin Booker, that's not luck. Um, when you look at, and, and, and I mean, if you want to do this, we can do that. If you look at why, the, why would why <laughs> why would we call the draft luck? So are you are you sitting here saying that you know the Jazz identifying Devin Booker is luck? Like, are are we sitting here saying that that um, that Luca was <coughs> excuse me that Luca was a number one overall pick because he was lucky? Like I that that's not how the draft works. I mean, I understand that, you know, certainly the lottery is pretty straightforward most years, but you gotta understand the time and effort that goes into scouting these players. I mean, it's not like these NBA teams just show up to the draft and are like, all right, well, we're drafting fifty eight hundred overall. Uh, this guy's available when it comes around, so we're just gonna take him. I mean, that's not how it works. The dude. draft is about identifying a player's top end. And in twenty fourteen the Jazz drafted Dante Exum at five. Marcus Smart went six. Julius Randle went seven. Uh, if you go down the list, Zach Levine went 13th. TJ Warren went 14th. Now TJ's been hurt. Um, so, yeah, maybe leave him out. Gary Harris went 19th. Um, A lot of experience with Gary Harris, don't you? Yeah, I mean, you can look at the fact that Jazz took Rodney Hood at 23. Um, Clint Capella went 25 in that draft. Uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich went 27th in that draft. Uh, I, I mean, the, the, the draft mistakes, Joe Harris went 33rd in that draft. I mean, the draft mistakes out of the Jazz in 2014 are too many to name. And, you know, if we go to 20, what, 2013, go back another year, 
Um, you know, you start looking at, at the Jazz draft history and you're just like, okay, Shabazz Muhammad. Uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo went right behind Shabazz Muhammad. So it's so, like, what were you looking at? Like, how did you not? Dennis Schroeder went two picks later. Shane Larkin, um, eh, Shane Larkin's in, in Europe. Okay, fine. Um, Tim Hardaway Jr. went 24th in that draft. Reggie Bullock, making a huge contribution to the Knicks right now, went 25th. Uh, then you traded for Rudy Gobert, who went 27th. Um, like, I can go up and down. I can go up and down this list. Every year, the Jazz made a draft mistake. Like, if if you look at, just look at the way that you hung on to Ennis Cantor too long. Um, look at the fiasco with Gordon Hayward. Um, if you look at the, the agonizing decision on extending Derek Favors. Why did you extend Derek Favors all those years ago? I don't know either. Like, you're, you're consistently making mistakes. The draft is not luck. Um, if, if we look at, um, you know, the, the, the following drafts after, like we could go up and down this list. The year you drafted Trey Lyles, what was the next pick? Mm. Devin Booker was the ne next pick. Um, I mean, Terry Rozier after that, I, like, I, I mean, all these we guys. could go over all, like all of these names that are on this list are better then, I mean, hell, Kavon Looney's in that draft, and I'd rather have Kavon Looney than Trey Lyles. Are you yeah. kidding me? Yeah, well, and I think, like, too, I mean, like, if you're... Stop. Uh, again, not to directly call out dude who said, you know, the draft is luck. Jackson. Jackson, like, if it's luck, then how did the Warriors build a championship out of the draft? Uh, I mean, again, let's not forget that yeah. that they won, uh, what was it, two championships before KD showed up? I mean, they built that thing out of the draft. The Warriors are all about the draft. I mean, the whole thing. I mean, literally their core, you know, Steph, Clay, Draymond, like all those guys. And by the way, on their roster right now, they've got guys who are contributing for them this season out of the draft. So... I just don't, I'm not going to sit here and say that the draft is luck. What I'm going to sit here and say is that the draft is what makes or breaks you because you can't win a right. championship uh, in any sport, in my opinion, by, by quote unquote, buying it because the Warriors didn't buy a championship. They had what they needed to win a championship and they just got lucky enough to be a team that KD would consider that that's what happened, frankly. And, and they were willing to pay him and pay luxury tax and do all that. Baseball is the only exception to this rule. That's it. I mean, but it, even, and, but like even in baseball, sometimes I feel like, you know, yeah, you can buy pitching or you can, you know, you can spend a lot of money and get a lot of good bats and do these you things. You have to draft pitching and buy position players. But somehow in the postseason, it's funny how there's always that one moment where Mr. Nobody comes up and gets you that one base hit you need or or gets that one out you need or just that one thing that you need to to survive the series and you go on and win or so like that's why I say in sports it's never you don't buy rings right like yes you can spend a lot of money to help yourself At the end of the day the guys that you draft are going to come back like the Chiefs the Chiefs wouldn't be any like wouldn't be here if they hadn't drafted him. If know? they hadn't drafted Mahomes and sat him behind Alex Smith, you don't win a championship. Anyway, the point is the Jazz have been terrible in the draft. The Jazz have been very mediocre in free agency. That that the the blame here is Dennis Lindsay. And again, you know, I'll say the tragedy in firing Dennis Lindsay is you're probably gonna wash out uh Quinn Snyder. But if I were again, if I'm Ryan Smith, I'm gonna hire a general manager and tell him Quinn Snyder's my head coach at least for a year. You're going to stay with Quinn Snyder for one year. And I don't think most general manager candidates would have a problem with that. I, I really don't. He is Quinn Snyder is very well respected around the league. Uh, eBay the Silver Surfer says, Ben Simmons is amazing. He just has to put that work in shooting. That is all. Donovan couldn't shoot a lick at Louisville, but he put that work in. The problem is like this. Do you, do you guys know about the left-handed, right-handed conversation that's going on with Ben Simmons? <laughs> Ben Simmons does everything right-handed. Like, each shakes hands, um, you know, no, I'm not going to go sexual on this, but he does that right-handed, too. <laughs> um, the only thing he does left-handed is shoot a basketball, and not well. And they are committed. Doc Rivers, Ben Simmons has admitted it. They have a program in place to try and get this right. And I think that Ben Simmons... It's going to be a different player next year. Now, does that mean he'll shoot right-handed? I have no idea. Uh, but he's going to be a better basketball player next year. 
um, because he, he finally got exposed. And I think one of the things that a lot of people haven't considered is nobody's asked Ben Sh Simmons to be a shooter before. Nobody's asked Ben Simmons to be a key contributor on offense because you always had good role players like J.J. Redick. Yeah. So you didn't need another shooter. Now you need Ben Simmons to shoot because the guys that you have on your team, think about Thibel on that team. Like you can't, you're counting on him because Ben Simmons can't play offense. Well, that's why Ben Simmons has to now become an offensive player. Now, honestly, if I were the Philadelphia 76ers, I would probably trade Ben Simmons because I think he needs to change the scenery. The mental thing is the far bigger concern for me than the physical. Yeah. Like I can go send. I can send Ben Simmons to Chris Brickley, and he's going to shoot a basketball better. I can send Ben Simmons, who lives in L.A. in the offseason, the lethal shooter, who is, who is based in L.A. I can send Ben Simmons to lethal shooter, and lethal will make him a better shooter. Will make him a shooter. I can't fix his brain. I can't fix his lack of confidence. I can't fix the fact that he doesn't believe in himself, and all of that is terrifying. Yeah. That's why I would trade Ben Simmons, not because he can't shoot. Um... Michael Burton says the issue with Utah is a lot of top tier talent has not wanted to play. Wow, comment dump, my bad. Um, has not wanted to play there, so you don't get a Reggie Jackson for a million dollars. Well, no. Why did Reggie Jackson go to Los Angeles? Reggie Jackson quit basketball. For those of you who don't know the story, real quick on Reggie Jackson. Reggie Jackson quit the NBA. He was done. He said, I'm not playing anymore. I'm going to live my life. Well, then all of a sudden, his phone rang, and it was Paul George. And Paul George was on the phone saying, Hey, man. We need you. We need you. Give us one, give us one season. Um, we'll give you a million bucks. Give us one season. Reggie Jackson has said repeatedly he only went to the Clippers because he and Paul George are very close. So it's not that he didn't want to play in Utah or wouldn't have played in Utah. He wanted to play with Paul George. But the difference is, is he didn't get the call. Probably not. Uh, and, and this is the conversation we've also had about Dennis yeah, Lindsay. Yeah, like he didn't get the call. Did Dennis Lindsay ever call Austin Rivers? Now, we'll never know. But did Dennis Lindsay ever call Austin Rivers? I'm going to guess not. Mike James, probably m most people believe he was the second best available player at any position when the Nets signed him. He's also best friends with Kevin Durant's, I think, brother. So yeah, I, there was probably not an option there. But did the Jazz ever call? You got to at least try. Mike James? I mean, that's all I'm asking for. At least make the call. Mike James doesn't even have an agent. I don't know how many people realize that. Mike James does One of not the have an agent. Yeah. You I, just pick up the phone and call him. Are they going to call him now? Are you going to call Austin Rivers now? Yeah, because he's a free agent. You They're can, both free agents. You can split your mid-level with Austin Rivers. Are, are you going to? Are you going to? Are you going to call him? Probably not. And that's to me, that's a problem. This team needs a wing defender. No, this team doesn't need a wing defender. They need the best available number two that you can find for Donovan Mitchell. And if you get that guy, he's going to be a, a, a an average or above defender. No, there's no doubt about that, um, because you can't. You're not going to get worse than you are now, and what you what you need, you just need better athletes, man. Yeah, I mean, I, that's, that's what a, you need. You, you you need, yeah, man. I mean, I I know that that sounds so simplistic and straightforward, but again, what do you need to be a great defender? You you firstly need great athleticism. Yeah, and then once you have that athleticism, okay, now we can you know teach you to be a disciplined defender and not leave your feet and all the things that go into playing great defense in the NBA. But firstly, you got to have the ability to keep up with the offensive player, yes. and they don't even have that right now. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, Eddie Gar Edgar Garcia says, "What's up, my boys? What's up, Edgar? What Good up? to see you." Um, Eric and Raleigh says the Warriors are going to be back next year too. Yes, with probably yeah. with a vengeance. Another great, another great point. I mean, that's James what I'm Wiseman saying. will be healthy next year. So I'm saying, dude, like you have all these teams that had a bunch of injuries, and, and uh, you know, it, it, the path was just a little bit easier this year. Next year, it's not going to be like that. Uh, Leandre Unreal says, "Let's bring back Hayward and get rid of Conley. That would solve our biggest problem." Okay, I'll move on because anytime we bring up Gordon Hayward's name, I mean, like, the show melts down. Yeah. Uh, LVL307, Clippers versus Suns is the championship. Yeah, probably. Uh, James Knight says, Monty, you had the Jazz winning the Clippers series. You sure have backflipped. Um, I think what I said was I thought it'd be a seven-game series. And when I when, what I said was it's an incredible collapse that the Utah Jazz lost to the Clippers because you're up 2-0, you have home court advantage, right? And you lost four straight to the Clippers. It's an incredible collapse. It is inexplicable. You were in a three-game series 
they didn't have Kawhi Leonard, it's an inexplicable collapse. I actually think losing this series is more of a collapse than the bubble 3-1 last year. I, I, I mean, it is mind-blowing that the Utah Jazz lost to the Clippers. I, I, can't even, I can't even believe it. You're telling me that you couldn't go to L.A. and win. You're telling me, oh, wait, you couldn't win that game four at home. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to say. Or I game mean, five at home. It doesn't even matter if you couldn't go to L.A. and win. I mean, you lost You lost at home. I it mean, is earth-shattering that, earth can't happen. that they, can't happen. they lost. And that's, I mean, why, that's why I think it was so... That's why I think it was so demoralizing, frankly, for the fan base because, you know, it, it, all season long, there was almost like this mystique about the Viv where it was like, man, you know, even before the fans came back in full force, it was like, man, we're going to the Viv and, and this is going to be a really tough game. Like, we're probably, yeah. they're going to shoot like 55% from three and we're just going to do the best that we can and, and we're going to plan not to win, win a game there, you know, like in the regular season. I mean, legitimately, like that's how it felt when you played the Jazz. And then all of a sudden, the Clippers come along and they have some piece of crap head coach in Ty Lue that can't make adjustments. And you're like, all right, the Jazz are going to walk through this team too. Um, and it's going to be Suns and Jazz in the Western Conference Finals. And that just straight up didn't happen. That, I mean, that just didn't happen. So, and again, that didn't happen because the Clippers have more athleticism, and that's why they're able to absorb injuries because yeah. they can they can keep up with you. Yeah, I'll be interested to see how all that works out. Like, I, I think this Jazz front office thing is amazing. But, no, I don't think I flip-flopped on the Jazz at all. Um, I I just truly recognize that this is a, the base is here. The core is here. Donovan Mitchell and, and Rudy Gobert make up a very good starting point. See, even that, though, I feel like is a, is a point of contention. Like, if you ask people, what's the core of the Jazz? Is it four people? Is it two people? Oh, no, it's, it is it is Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell. And I agree with you, but I think there's a lot of people saying it's Rudy, Don, Bogey, Jingles. Like, that's the all those guys with those two is the core. That's what I think a lot of people think. That's a core of a mediocre team. If you want to win a championship right now, your core is Rudy Gobert and, and Donovan Mitchell. Those are the guys you are married to long term. Um, and those are the guys that you're not, you're, you're not going to trade. Um, mainly because... Donovan Mitchell, you know, that's your franchise guy. And Rudy Gobert, for better or for worse, is A, untradeable with his contract. And B, he does a lot of really good things. He does things at an elite level. Offense is not one of them. So hopefully this summer he changes that. Um, I don't love the idea that he's going to play in the Olympics. I don't love the idea that um, really any of these guys are going to go play in in Tokyo. I think that's a mistake, but that's just me. Um Let's see. Who else? Let me read a couple of the highlights. Um, Jackson says, if you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always got. Mm -hmm. So keep Lindsay. Then I like the, the one seed and our chances, if healthy. Lindsay can learn and make the team better. He's had a decade to learn and make the team better. Why yeah. are you advocate? Jackson, who are you? Are you is, is this the Dennis Lindsay burner account? Why are you advocating <laughs> to keep Dennis Lindsay? He's been here a decade. And he is fit. There is nobody that's going to think Dennis, who's going to say Dennis Lindsay's drafted well. How is Dennis Lindsay drafted well? Tell me the best free agent signing he's made. Where is the move that was like, well, man, there's one trade, and it is Donovan Mitchell. The Donovan Mitchell Trey Lyles deal with Denver is a great trade. Change the fortunes of this team. Rudy Gobert, Rudy Gobert trading for Rudy Gobert again with Denver does not have a huge impact if you don't make the Donovan Mitchell deal. So pairing those two together, sure, I'll even give you that. What else after that? You have not been a championship contender in his entire 10 years as the 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 guy directing this front office. And that's a long time, man. <laughs> it's going on a decade. So what has Dennis Lindsay done? If you do what you've always done, you're going to get what you've always gotten, which is a mediocre, disappointing team. Tell me what Dennis Lindsay's done that's been truly elite. How many, how much pain did this organization suffer through in the lottery? Year after year after year. And what did that all turn into? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You swung and missed on just about everybody. Dante Exum is horrifying. Is he bad. even playing anymore? Like I haven't. He looked was in... in Cleveland. I don't know where Dante Exum is now. I frankly haven't followed him. Uh, he was in Cleveland. Like Trey Lyles is. 
I mean, I guess is still playing. I don't know. Like a lot of these guys are going to come back. Like where's Jimmer now? Because Jimmer, they, I don't know how many people heard the Chinese Basketball Association is not allowing foreign players in this year. So a lot of guys don't have a home. So it'll be interesting to see where those guys end up. Like with all due respect, Jackson, I just don't. Can't get down with it. Yeah, I can't get down with that at all. It, like even a little bit. Um, you know, I, I just think that, yeah. Uh, James Knight said at least try some zone or mix it up with trapping the ball to force the occasional turnover. That's exactly what they, the Jazz yeah, played zone. they did that. That's exactly what the Jazz did. Um, not wait like a hack uh, for a hack like man. Terrence Mann's not a hack. See, this is this is what James, I James. Mean, what dude. are you? What game are you watching? Terrence Knight's a hack. He's a second year player that dropped thirty points on you. What hack? You left him standing in the corner because you had no other option. I mean, I I just don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't get that. Brandon White says, says only a few morons want Quinn fired. Our perimeter defense was a turnstile. Totally agree with that. Um, Dante May says, I want Lonzo Ball. Lonzo would be a great fit in our offense. Uh, Eric and Raleigh says, Monty, what I mean by they can't sign anyone is that they can't sign big free agents. They can only afford a fringe guy. Sure, that's why you got to trade. You got you, This roster, the answer of Stan Pat is not an answer. Yeah. That's surrendering. If you stand pat, you're surrendering. And I still think, and it's not going to, it's not, it's not this season or next season or even the season after that. But I think it, just like we heard some rumblings with Devin Booker before the Suns are doing what they're doing right now, you're not going to be able to to not go to the finals for five years at a time and think that Donovan Mitchell is going to stay with you forever. You, you largely know? left this roster intact after the bubble, and it got you, slight. It got you. You had a much better off season. Uh, or a regular season, rather, excuse me. You went from fifth to one. That's great. You won a playoff series. That's an improvement. But you still feel the same way you felt a year ago because you think you, you know, I, like I just, I just think Dennis Lindsay and this jazz organization don't know who they are. It, it is the cardinal sin in professional sports. You got to know who you are and where you are. And I just don't think Dennis Lindsay has his hands on that. I, I, I really don't. Um, Jackson says, yeah, and Donovan should have been the number one pick. How lucky was it that we got him at 13? I don't think anybody thought Donovan Mitchell should have been the number one pick. And, and, I mean, unless I'm wrong, I, I don't know. Um, I mean, I, I, I just I, don't understand the perspective that you have on the draft, man. Like I, I'm not, I'm not sitting here saying that you're dumb or, or stupid or anything, but I, but I just don't understand like where you're coming from on this whole you know, these teams are getting lucky in the draft. So, so the Warriors got lucky three times and, and, you know, you've got like people got lucky drafting, you know, in the LeBron era, they got lucky, dra like getting into a position to draft LeBron or, or any of these mainstay players. Like you're, that's not luck, dude. Like, you know, again, the teams that draft at an elite level never have money issues. And why is that? Because they don't have to pay these guys during the period with which a player earns their money. So you're paying these guys on the cheap to give you these great performances like the Terrence Mann, who's definitely not a hack. He's been playing this well for a long time, and nobody talks about it because he's on a team with Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. So when you draft guys like Terrence Mann, it's funny how you, you, they come out for you in the postseason. There's an old saying, you know, that a, a lot of people you're starting to hear more and more, which is, you know, you can call it lucky, but teams like the Clippers are calling it putting themselves in the best possible position to win a game as many times as possible. Yeah, that's what that yes. that's what they call luck. So, however you want to word it, I'm just simply saying that the Jazz are not good at drafting with Dennis Lindsay. Yeah, and by the way, in that draft, the Denver Nuggets drafted Donovan Mitchell 13th. Um, the Utah Jazz at 24 drafted Tyler Lydon. Like who? And they went and traded for Donovan Mitchell. What's a good trade? Do me wrong. You, you turn Trey Lyles into Donovan Mitchell. So that's great. Um, but the fact that Denver was willing to trade Donovan Mitchell for Trey Lyles. And by the way, the, the guy in that draft, that was a terrible draft, by the way. Uh, Markel Fultz, one, bust. Lonzo, two, bust. Jason Tatum, superstar. Josh Jackson, bust. De'Aaron Fox, jury's out. Jonathan Isaac, bust. Lori Markinen, eh. Uh, Frank Nilakina, bust. Dennis Smith, bust. Zach Collins, Malik Monk, Luke Kennard, um, just a role player. And then Donovan Mitchell, superstar. And after that, 
Bam Adebayo went in that draft. Um, I got to go down, down, down. Jared Allen, mm, um, OJ Ananobi. Eh. I mean, there's not another Kyle Kuzma. Eh. Like, there's not another great, like Frank Jackson. Um, there's not another real difference making player in that draft. And that and that's fine. And people talked about how that draft was light from I remember yeah. all those people talking about how that draft was light. But the problem is, again, is that because of how poorly you drafted in the drafts leading up to that one, as an example, you you can't as a team, you can't really afford to have a light draft because the drafts prior to that that were loaded, you didn't take advantage of it. And and, and so that's why I say everybody's saying, Oh, well, they can't do anything because they're negative 20 to 24 million in cap space and they're in this crazy situation. It's not that they can't do anything. They are in a difficult position, but I don't care if it's difficult or not. You got to do something about this if you want to move forward. Like that's just, that's business in the NBA. I mean, nobody cares if, if it's easier or harder. Uh, all people care about is if you're winning championships or not for yeah. this organization, you know? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I just, I think that I look at some of those trades and I'm like, man, dude. I, I don't, I don't, I mean, am I the only one that, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Sean Mirzinski, good morning too. He says, yeah, you're not wrong on choosing to play in the Olympics. The players that have decided to play are making a mistake. You need rest. Yeah. I mean, and I'm, I'm glad Donovan's rest. not playing in the Olympics, man. I mean, that's a, that's a really smart move. I think Devin Booker, you know, choosing to play in the Olympics is very risky. Uh, frankly, I think, uh, and I get it with Durant, but I also think it's an extremely risky move for his body. Yep. This is likely with where he's at in his career, his last go around for the Olympics. So I get it, man. I understand. Um, but it's risky. You, I mean, and also you're playing 52 minutes against the Bucks, in which you lost the game by like a quarter exactly. of an inch, dude. Like, exactly. I mean, it just is risky. Feeble the man says, I'm not sure about trading Bojan because Bojan uh, is – a player for the playoffs. Every team that wants to win a championship, you want a player like Boyan that can give you 30 points in 20 minutes. Bojan. But when has he? Doesn't get the ball. I mean, he gave you one it's, first half. Again, roster construction. You, what, what value does a guy bring if the superstar that you're going to live with for the next 10 years doesn't get him the ball when he's on the floor? I mean, that that's like, I mean, you just can't, there's no getting around that, you know, and, I, and frankly, I can't blame Donovan for not getting him the ball because when he does get him the ball in the postseason anyway, he wasn't making a lot of shots. You know, he had one, think about it, he had one game where he really balled out. He had that one game where he went off in the first half and and that was about it, you know, that game, I think that, what was it, game five? It was at the Viv, game five, where, where you know, he goes, he's six for six and, and the Clippers are, and the Clippers and Jazz are, I think it was like a 65-63 game going to the half. We remember that game. That was like the only game that Bogey really did anything that was real meaningful. And unfortunately, in that game, you still lost. So what are we really talking about? Yeah, and um, if you look at the numbers, um, in game six, he gives you 14 points, four of eight shooting from three. In game five, he gave you 32 on nine of 17. Yeah, that was the big one. Yep. In, um, yeah, game four, 18 points, two of five from three. Game three, nine points, one of five. Mm -hmm. Game two, 16 points, three of five. Game one, 18 points, three of six. I mean, he's a he's a a third or fourth option on a team. Um, if if Boyan Bogdanovich is your number two, as he is it with the Jazz, I just don't see you winning. And again, this goes back to, oh, they'd have won a championship if Bogey hadn't gotten hurt. Would they have, though? Really? I don't think so. They, they weren't beating the Lakers. I, no. I, I just, no I way. don't see it that way. And I, I I think I look at the games that where he really went off. Um, I was at the 48-point game against Denver. Um, they were his best games were usually without Donovan Mitchell. And his 32 point performance was with a very injured Donovan Mitchell. Um, so it doesn't surprise me. I just, I mean, I, again, I'm not trying to pile on Boyan. I just don't think he's, I, I don't think Boyan Bogdanovich is a difference maker. He can't defend very well. Um, he cannot defend his own position, which is a problem. Um, and he shoots exceptionally well. He's got value in that he is, but he's a limited player because he is defensively, it's tough. And that's the thing. Even if he does make that, you know, even if he gives you the 15 to 20 points a night, his guy is getting 15 to 20 points a night. So it, it, it X's each other out. It doesn't really, 
So that that's why I think it's a great way to put it. You know, he's not a, a difference making player because to be a difference making player, you gotta you know you gotta make a difference <laughs> on the defensive end as well. You know, so it just is. It's tough, man. I like I like I like Bogey. I do. I, I like the shooting he brings, but you can't be a one dimensional player on a championship caliber team in the league anymore. That's just not. That's not how you do it. Yeah, Brandon Whiteside says Warriors did get lucky. Curry was constantly hurt when he was first in the league. It allowed them to get green in time. What? Okay. Man, that's just one of the silliest takes I've ever heard. Were they? Did they get lucky when all the pre-draft scouts were saying that Curry was too small and he didn't have the ideal NBA build and, and all these things? No, they didn't get lucky. They drafted him, and yeah, he went through a three- or four-year period to begin his career where he was getting used to the physicality of the league. Lonzo goes through it. Like, all the young guys go through it. They all suffer injuries because they take a beating because the NBA is twice as big as the Because they all want to shoot threes so they don't lift weights because they want to play finesse. It, yeah. It, anybody that that says that the Warriors got lucky, you, I frankly, you just don't know what you're talking about, or you're just trying to stir the pot. Because the way that the Golden State Warriors developed Clay, Draymond, and, and Steph um, – I mean, they turned Steph Curry loose. And they said to Steph Curry, go do what you want to do. Go be you. And Draymond Green, Clay Thompson, I mean, the development of Clay's mid-range game, I mean, that's the, the sensational part of his game that you worry about with the knee injury and the Achilles. And is that mid-range game going to be back? Because uh, he's not, he, Clay Thompson's never been a guy that flies to the rack. He can, but he's never been a guy that tries to get in the paint. Clay Thompson wants to shoot the ball. Yeah, and that's what you worry about. I, I, th there's no luck involved in the Warriors winning championships. They, they're role players. The Iguodala's. The, I mean, that. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, we can move on from that. Um, give me a rack attack, Jake. James Knight says. Yeah, I mean, we play. We used to play drops on the well, show. Well, we're having a pretty serious conversation. The rack attack. Jake doesn't like playing drops I, on the show anymore. True, like he man. thinks it's dumb. It's so, not true. You know. uh, we're just. I mean, um, what, what do you? I mean, you know, what do you want me to play? You know, what, like what? You know, Sakshay says Jazz will will not win anything with the loser attitude. Fire Dennis Lindsay. This is not his family business. Thank you. Uh, Hayward will be available. Let's bring him back. It's exactly what we need. Stop. Whatever. Stop. Just, just don't. Um, what else? What do you got? What do you got, Phoenix tonight? Phoenix and uh, the clip joint. Mm, I still think Phoenix wins tonight. Um, it's my guy Devin Booker, man. Yeah, I, I don't know about another true forty superstar. point triple double, but just because that's a sensational performance, Elite but, player. But like thirty, thirty five, you know, double Sex double, machine. you know, yeah, oh, awesomeness. One twenty. 125 for the Suns, something like that. That's that's what I see them scoring for sure. You want to play that Stephen A. Smith bite on, on Devin Booker? No, no. Okay. No. Devin Booker's amazing. He's awesome. He's an assassin. He's amazing. <laughs> he is an assassin. I'm telling you, he's going to wind up being a Laker. I mean, how much has One he day. talked about Kobe Bryant? Yeah, once he, he needs – let's say that he goes on to win a championship this year as a Phoenix Sun. I think that expedites the process. But we'll see. Yeah, I think we'll see. He wants to be, you know, it is what it is. Um, what do you make a Suns and Four guy? We need to talk about this. And if you don't know Suns and Four guy, the st well, you're not an NBA fan. But Suns and Four guy was involved in a violent fight in Denver where he got into a fist fight and some guys went after him because he was yelling at Denver fans saying Suns and Four and – Denver fans pretty much attacked him, and he he beat one guy unconscious, punched another guy. He beat the hell out of both of those guys. Yeah, I too. mean, <laughs> and Devin Booker celebrated him openly for doing that. And what happened is they brought him to Phoenix, gave him tickets to game one, and then there was a huge brawl on the concourse. Two Clipper fans attacked a concourse full of, of Suns fans, and those two Clipper fans took a beating. And... Then the Suns released a statement yesterday saying that's not who we are as a fan base. This is not who our fans are. My fucking ass. We are uh, savages in that box. Um, but, you know, like the Suns released a statement saying we're better than that. Let's be better than that. Well, then what were you doing with Suns and Four Guy? Um, what, yeah, what were you doing bringing in a guy who did the exact same thing that you said you're better than? 
highlighting him, giving away Sons and Four Guy t-shirts, like making him a celebrity, having droves of fans following him around asking for his autograph at Suns Arena, and then you say you're better than that and this is not who we are as an organization. I, I support the Suns. I think what James Jones has done in turning that organization around is nothing short of spectacular, speaking of drafting well. I mean, I think they're all on the right path. Their one misstep this year has been Suns and Four Guy. And I think Gabe Ledley, Lopes fan Gabe on Twitter, made a really good point. We have packed arenas with people who have been pent up for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some of this. Yeah. And the thing that I I can't believe is, like, what what brings you to a point where you're going to punch another person in the face? Like, I can't even imagine doing that. Yeah. Um, I've seen some of that playing pickup basketball. Like I've seen some of that. I've never thought about punching a guy in the face. Now I would never do it. I just will never get in a physical altercation. Um, and I just don't understand the randomness of that. Yeah. I mean, it just is a, I, yeah, I don't know. You're, you're, we're trying to, we're trying to sit here and rationalize the irrational. I just think that from an organization standpoint, you can't have your superstar player, you know, the face of the franchise trying to send sons and four guys signed book jersey and tickets and like, you know, doing all this great stuff for him and celebrating him um, because it's encouraging it. And I, and I just think that, you know, it's not good enough. Like to me, you, you can't unwind the clock. So yeah, you're going to release a statement. Rex Chapman's going to do a video on your cord and like, you know, you got all this stuff that you're doing and you're checking the boxes, but that's really all it is. You're just checking the boxes and saving face for the organization. When in reality, there's probably going to be another fight. There's probably going to be more, you know, stuff that happens. And, and, you know, it just, it is what it is, but we can't have Devin Booker encouraging it. Dominic Gonzalez says, I don't think that there's that their fault fans are really stupid. The sons in four guy was self-defense. Okay. Sure, at the beginning when when they punched him, that was self-defense. When you had a guy who looked passed out leaning over seats and you continued to punch him in the face when he was not coming at you, and that was not self-defense, that was savagery. And when you're trying to get at the second guy and you're, you're punching him in the face when he can't defend himself, that's self-defense? No, it's not. That's being a savage. Yeah. And there's no place for that in society. Like this, this ridiculousness at the Suns con- uh, if game on the fight on the concourse. I mean, it's literally a crowd of people, and you're getting into an all-out brawl. I mean, it turned into it started with those two Clipper fans and the Suns fan, but then and it everybody turned was into talking like six junk. Guys, everybody was talking junk. Yeah. And what were they yelling? Suns in four. Yeah. They wanted to be the next viral sensation, and, and it turned out you were. And then the son, the Clipper fan punched one guy in the face, and then it all hell broke loose. And I, I, there is no excuse for this. This was not self defense. When you have a group of people stomping on a, another man's head, that's being a Dodger fan. That's not being self defense. Yeah, right. Like I mean, you're just it, it, it's really it's hard low to cash, defend, that. bro. It's low cash. It is. It's really hard to defend that. Really hard to defend that. Brandon Whiteside says drafting well with perennial lotto picks. Are you talking about the the Warriors? Well, the, what's the difference between the Warriors and the Jazz then? Oh, wait, the Jazz didn't draft very well at all. So the Jazz had perennial lotto picks. What's your point on that? I don't understand that. Um, well, are we really surprised out of L.A. fans? Uh, well, I, not all L.A. fans are terrible fans. I mean, I, I know a ton of people that live in L.A. that are Laker, Clipper well, no Clipper fans. There aren't really Clipper fans, but uh, that are Dodger, Laker, Angel fans. They're not bad fans. They're not bad people. I mean, unless you're a USC fan, then you're scum of the earth. But that's not really my point here. The point is, it's not all LA fans. You know, like it, it's in general. Dominic Gonzalez says they attacked him first, but I understand they're uh, taking it. They're taking it too far. Yeah, I mean when. If you're punching a guy that is unconscious or or not able to defend himself, I mean you're that's your fault now. And there's video of it, that's your fault now. Yeah. I mean, come on. Come on. Um James Knight says you keep dumping on my man Jingles Monty, you will have to a target on your back when you come to Melbourne. Well, it's not really dumping on Jingles. I mean, I I I think we're just I think we all know what Joe Ingles is. What what happened to oh Joe Ingles is in playoff P's head. Yeah, my He owns ass, Paul dude. George. Yeah, how did that 40 and 16 look? Joe Ingles is not the same player anymore. 
Joe Ingles is a guy that can still defend. And offensively, you're asking him to stand at the elbow, three extended, stand on the, at the side of the, the stripe and shoot the ball out of the corner. That's what you're asking him to do because that's what he does. Um, I, I would not extend him. I just don't think it's a crime to say that Joe Ingles is past his prime, man. And you're, you're trying to win a championship right now. I, I mean, I just don't understand why that's got to be viewed as, is dumping on Joe Ingles or, or hating on Joe Ingles. I mean, father time is undefeated, man. Like yeah. LeBron James is past his prime. Like Joe Ingles is past his prime. It, it just is what it is. It is what it is. And you can't be loyal and you got to make good decisions for the health of the organization. And, and, you know, let let Jingles finish out his career for somebody else. He's going to go and play international ball now. Do we really think that Joe Ingles should be playing international ball? I don't. I don't. Yeah, the guy's body can only take so much. So I, I you know, I just, I, I don't know, man. And, and and again, it needs to be said, we're not Jazz fans. We're we're not going to cater to this to this loyal, you know, this loyal feeling and this love affair that we have with guys like. Derek Favors and Joe Ingles and and Bogey and these guys. And we're not going to be heartbroken and and forever scorned when Gordon Hayward goes to Boston and wish him poor like I that whole like take your emotion out of it. Like emotions and loyalty are terrible in sports. Like what you should be saying as a Jazz fan is man, we 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 lost 4 games in a row. That tells us all we need to know. We should stop trying to justify this roster, and we should start trying to figure out what we're going to do to build a roster that can, A, withstand injury, because injury happens to every team in an NBA season, but B, can get back healthy as soon as possible and can do what they need to do, like the Phoenix Suns are without Chris Paul. Brandon Whiteside says Suns have half their roster is lotto picks because they haven't made the playoffs before this year. This is how the Suns have lotto picks after their role player, are there as their role players? Jazz have G League role players. Well, maybe if you had drafted Marcus Smart and Devin Booker, and you know, maybe if you had drafted well when you had multiple lotto picks, DeAndre Ayton, Cam Johnson, you know, just the guys that are contributing for you every single. Maybe night. if you had identified campaign as a guy who could resurrect himself, uh, maybe if you had developed your talent. Um, I mean, you're, you're trying to find fault with the way the Suns are built and I'm telling you it's the way they should be built. No, let, let's, let's, let's say this how it is. You, the jazz fans right now with this draft thing are trying to spin it and say that the jazz haven't drafted poorly when they have drafted poorly. Like, again, I just wish jazz fans would say, yeah, we drafted poorly. Yeah, our cap is true. And that's why we Dennis Lindsay should be fired. <laughs> like, it's really straightforward and easy. I don't know why we have to story tell and try to justify, like, what happened in the bubble, what happened this year, because it's essentially the same thing as you were pointing out. I think that I was thinking about that while you were talking. That's a great point. Everybody's saying, oh, well, we would have won if we had bogey. Well, you had bogey, and you didn't have Conley this year. So what is it? Oh, that's right. It's a roster full of guys who, who can't help you in multiple ways you're relying you're like a you're like a a lego toy you miss one piece and all of a sudden you don't have the toy anymore you know you got you got to get better than that you have to be better than that a lego toy yeah i mean that's what you are that's the best example that i could think of you know you've got all these pieces that work together and if you're missing one piece you're no longer the team that you want to be you cannot be built that way that's not how this game works Jazz have drafted poorly. However, a lot of the years they have not been lo- a lottery team. It's not okay. Do we have to pull it up again? You drafted Trey Lyles directly uh, in front of Devin Booker. You not thought, in the lottery. You thought Trey Lyles was a better player than Devin Booker. Where are we getting away from that? I was on the air with Kyle Gunther that night. And was told I was stupid and don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, Trey Lyles is a great pick. Oh, my God. Should have drafted Devin Booker. You're in position. Oh, man, you're in position. Here we go. Jazz are going to get Trey Lyles. Um, Huge mm. mistake. Mm. And I'll go back to Dante Exum. How did Dante Exum do in college? Oh. Oh, wait, he didn't play college. Okay, well, he was a pro then, like Luka Doncic. How did he do as a pro? Oh, wait, that's right. He didn't play professional basketball. You know. Um, you drafted a guy who had never played a single meaningful minute of competitive basketball on Dante Exum. Bad alert, major bad alert. Yeah. Don't 
Don't believe he had gone through puberty at that point either. Um, that's probably too much. The point is, you draft a guy who'd never played competitive basketball, didn't have a body, wasn't built, and you thought that was a good idea. And you're trying to justify that you missed on picks that weren't in the lottery. And on top of that, you're trying to say that the teams that did hit in the lottery and the teams that did have successful drafts got lucky? Come on, guy. Come on, dude. I, I Come on. Like, I, I don't know. This is, this is where I say, okay, Jazz fan, you're storytelling yourself to death. I mean, that's what this is. And, and, and again, hear me clearly. I'm not calling you stupid or calling you dumb. But I am calling you a storyteller. You're you're trying to sit here and say, well, you know, all these other teams, you know, they had lottery picks, and that's how they were able to get to where they are. Didn't did did the Suns not draft Devin Booker at like 13th or 14th, right? <laughs> Here's from 2009 forward: Eric Maynard, Goran Sutan, Gordon Hayward. Okay, Gordon was a star. Jeremy Evans, Ennis Cantor, Alec Burks, Kevin Murphy. Shabazz Muhammad, Gorgie Dang. How about 2013 Gorgie Dang? Okay, my bad. Um, yeah, Gorgie Dang wasn't in the lottery, so it was a good pick. Uh, Eric Green, E-R-I-C-K. Eric Green, bust. Dante Exum, bust. Rodney Hood, bust. Jarnell, St oh, well, Jarnell Stokes. Well, fuck, it's Jarnell Stokes. I mean. He's an assassin. It's Jarnell Stokes. We're saved. Um, here, let's keep going. Trey Lyles, bust. <laughs> Olivier Hanlon, never God heard bless. of him. Uh, Danny Diaz. Uh, from it's Danny. Hey, Yo. Danny. What's up? Not in the lottery, and he sucks. <laughs> um, Torian Prince, bust. Isaiah Whitehead, bust. Joel uh, Balamboy from Ukraine, bust. Uh, oh, but he went to Weber State, and we got him in the second round. That means he's going to be as good as Dame, right? He sucks. Uh, Marcus Page, who? Tyrone Wallace, where? Uh, Tyler Linden, your mom. Josh Hart. <laughs> Josh Hart. Good pick for the oh. Lakers and now for the Pelicans. They turned Josh Hart. The Jazz drafted Josh Hart, who was turned into Anthony Davis for the Lakers. Hmm. Solid. Thomas Bryant. Uh, Nigel Williams-Goss. Three names. You're screwed. Uh, Grayson Allen. Good player for Memphis. Uh, Vincent Edwards, Darius Balsley. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Justin Wright Foreman, another three-name guy. He sucks. Yudoka Azabuki. Well, I mean, the ankle, and he was going to be a big contributor, still hasn't. And then don't forget uh, Sabin Lee from Vanderbilt. Second round, 38th pick. We're saved. Find me. The, do you see what I'm saying? Those are luck, all of bro. Dennis Lindsay's picks, plus some going back a little bit. And you're calling this luck? And you're saying that not all the picks were lottery picks. Are you kidding me? Who's the home run they've hit? Who's the home run that the Jazz have hit in the draft that's on this team that you're ready to rock and roll with and say, it, Dennis Lindsay gets a 10-year extension? Didn't draft Donovan. Now he traded for him, turned an awful pick in Trey Lyles into Donovan Mitchell. Okay, cool. Um, that's great. But don't, please don't try it. Like, and if I'm wrong, point it out. I'll read him. You know, uh, Michael Burton says Exum can defend and is stop. Uh, you're really Are defending. You serious, you're defending dude. Dante Exum, dude. Come on, come on. Uh, Giggity said these jazz fan takes are killing me the last two days. I mean, you're you're sitting here saying you're trying to justify that Dante Exum was a good pick. I mean, I, I come on, dude. Like. Uh, uh, like I'm why really... do we do that? Why why do jazz fans do this? Like I, I I need to understand this. Why is it that jazz fans do this? Why are you unable to to say, yeah, you know what? Dennis Lindsay hasn't been good in the draft for his tenure. Uh, uh, you know, for the Utah Jazz, he hasn't. We we haven't really had uh, a a real productive player that has allowed <laughs> us to build around him. We've had to go in and trade our picks. We've had to you know, go in and do extra steps to even get a guy that we can build around, whereas you've got the Suns and you've got all these other teams that have been able to draft and build around their guys. Uh, oh, why bring that up? That's not very nice of you to bring that up. What? Uh, yes, the Suns, or the Jazz, absolutely. Who said that? Where'd it go? 
and I forgive me, I lost. Oh, Jackson said could have had Kawhi too. Um, who said that? That's what I'm saying. Somebody said he could, and Jackson said could have had Kawhi. So could 14 of other teams. Okay, let's let's. Here's We're how that. We're not talking about 14 other teams. I think though. that was 2011, right? Like, here's, here's the 2011 NBA draft. Number one, Cleveland took Kyrie Irving, superstar championship. Great pick. Number two, Minnesota, Derek Williams. Yeah, he sucks. Bad oh, pick. but number three, the Utah Jazz. Okay, the pick is third in. overall, right? Where's Lottery the pick. Where's the draft sound, bro? I need it. The pick oh, is in. Oh, uh, man, dude. I have The pick is in at number three. The Utah Jazz select Ennis Cantor. Mm. Mm. Okay, was Ennis Cantor a bust? At number three overall, was Ennis Cantor a bust? Yes, at number three overall, he's a bust. Okay, 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 okay. Wait, 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 wait. Here it is. Now I got it. Now I got okay, it. Okay, go we're ready. Okay, ready? Yeah, go ahead. At number three, the Utah Jazz select Ennis Cantor. What are you, Moss? <laughs> number four, Tristan Thompson. Bust. Number five, Jonas Valachunas. Meh. Bust at four. Yeah, at four is a bust. But look at number seven. Bismack Biombo. Bro. Bust. Number eight, Brandon Knight. Bust. Number nine, Charlotte Kemba Walker. Turned into a star franchise player for them. Uh, oh, well, fuck. Number 10, hit it again. At number 10, the Milwaukee Bucks select Jimmer Fredette. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Who's going to say it? Who's going to say it? Bust. Oh, my God, dude. Uh, okay, here's where you get into trouble. Oh, shoot. There it is right there. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Number okay. 11, the Golden State Warriors select. <laughs> Clay Thompson. Uh oh. Okay. That, but that was a lucky pick. That was a lucky Luck. pick. It was luck. a lucky pick. They didn't develop they, him. They didn't scout him. No, they Nothing. didn't. They didn't know what Clay Thompson. Total was. Total luck. Yeah, total luck. It's fine. Who's on the clock at number twelve? The Utah Jazz. <laughs> the Utah Jazz select Alec Burks from. Okay, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> from Colorado. So wait. So wait, 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 wait. You've had two picks. <coughs> Dennis Cantor, Alec Burks. Okay, here's why you should fire Dennis Lindsay. 13, Markeith Morris. 14, Marcus Morris. Here we go. 15. <laughs> the Indiana Pacers select freakazoid weirdo out of San Diego State, Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> <laughs> Multi-time finals MVP and NBA champion. Uh, number 16, Nikola Vucevic. Quality player at 16. But you go down this list. <laughs> Bro, there's some guys. Oh, by the way, who? <laughs> at number 30, the Chicago Bulls select from Marquette, Jimmy Buckets. Hey. Look at all the superstars. You took two busts, and there's like a list so of wait, guys so wait, wait, who've wait, got wait. rings. Wait, the, in this draft, earlier in the draft, the Jazz took who? Who is it that they uh, took? Ennis Cantor and Alec Burks. And then, wait, so at 30, I believe Jimmy Butler is the one of the best players of that draft. Yes. At 30, they selected Wait, wait, him. play the thing again. Play the thing again. Got to play the thing again. <laughs> At number 31, the Miami Heat select Boyan Bogdanovich. Whatever. <laughs> I should probably stop. Um, we've probably gone too far now. And uh, you know. <laughs> uh... Brandon White cites this. I don't like Dennis Lindsay. I'm just saying, Suns first round picks. <laughs> okay, you. Why do you keep talking about the Suns having lotto players on their roster as though they've done something wrong? Yeah. I, I don't understand that. Anyway, uh, Alec would have been a good last second round pick. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, re <laughs> Jackson Damn. says exactly, reading through all the draft busts, so it's actually like 90% luck. Okay, Jackson, look, man, there are places where you can go and rehab from crack. Like it, I know it's a tough process, but it's not luck. It's not luck. Why Kawhi, is it? Like, what why are you talking about? Why is it that all the teams that draft well end up winning championships? Yeah. Why is it? 
And it's funny how all the teams that end up winning championships are the same teams that end up having the most championships in the league, like the Lakers and the Celtics and all these teams. I don't know. James Knight wants to know why we're wasting our time doing a podcast. We should be scouting for NBA franchises. That's what I'm saying, but dude. But we applied and they won't hire us. And we, we can't I think Whatever. it's I think it's a criminal background check. I'm not sure. Uh I can't. Well, we tell. didn't have an Uzi in our Lamborghini truck, so you know, we should yeah. be able to pass a background check. You know. Having lotto players on your team means you're not good for multiple years. Yeah, well, <laughs> Dude, why is this concept so hard for people? You to need grasp? to give me the PS4 back, Brandon, because now you're you're you're, you're <laughs> tripping, bro. Oh shit, damn, I am tripping. Okay, Dude. when you have multiple lotto picks on your roster, it means you draft well. When you're the Jazz and you don't have multiple lotto picks on your roster, being not that means you've been how in the lotto think, multiple times. But how do you think you know, they could afford to go and get Chris Paul? Uh, how do you think that that happens? Because <laughs> they're not paying guys trillions That's of dollars. That's right. They've got all these lotto picks on their right. team that they're developing. That like, I, It's unbelievable to me <laughs> that this is so difficult to understand. Oh, my like, God. Holy cow. I just I give up. The Jazz are terrible at the draft. They've always been. The, okay, if it's luck, you're telling me they can't get lucky just one time? Just one time. Once. Like, just... Like, be the guy who, who misses every number in the power Powerball, and you get the Powerball right, so they give you a dollar. Empty. The opposite of full. <laughs> Where's my dollar bill from the Jazz? Like, get lucky one time. Want it. Just one time, man. Damn. <laughs> All right, can we talk about smokers, please? Yeah, Jazz are getting that ass smoked in the draft. That much is clear. Uh, Jesus. I thought we were never going to talk about the Jazz draft again. Wow. Well, when I start hearing, oh, well, the Warriors got lucky and the, and the Suns are, are lucky. Bro, we're in an hour and a then, half. Then, then, then we got to talk about the draft. 